Good morning. This is David Plazas, Community Conversation Editor of the News Press, and we're here with Bob Chilmonic, who is a candidate for Lee County School Board District 2. I'm also joined by Michelle Doherty, a citizen member alumni of the News Press Editorial Board. Uh, this uh, will be posted on YouTube, and uh, Mr. Chilmonic, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, during this time, we'll be asking you some questions, and we'll also sure. this is an opportunity for you to talk about why you're running for school board and Absolutely. what some of your ideas are. Um, tell us a little bit about, uh, you served on the school board for uh, eight years. Yes, first and elected in 2002 uh, and uh, served two terms, uh, from uh, 2002 to six, and then, of course, from uh, 2006 to 2010. Mm -hmm. And uh, why are you running in 2012? Well, I feel that uh, based on the new uh, composition of the school board that I'll have a better opportunity to implement some of the ideas that I brought forward back in beginning in 2002 and all the way through 2010. Mm -hmm. And those, those areas of uh, concern that I've always had with the school district is ensuring that, number one, that we're spending my money wisely in the classroom, and number two, that we perform at a higher level academically. And I think the recent uh, coverage of some of the academic results shows that we have some areas that we need to improve on. One of my top priorities for running is neighborhood schools and ensuring that uh, we spend our money wisely uh, and, and not on transportation that's not producing the kind of results either academically or financially that's beneficial for the school district. We spend almost, with bus adjustments, $54 million a year on transportation in Lee County. And I think that money could be better spent in the classroom, enhancing programs, working on an, uh, uh, enhancement of math programs, science, and reading programs. Okay. So far, uh, Superintendent uh, Joe Burke has been here since July 1st of 2011. Right. He's coming up on his one-year anniversary. How do you rate the superintendent? I think he's doing a very good job right now at this point. Uh, it's, it's obvious to me that two of the legacy board members have made an attempt to remove him from office through some of the bogus charges that they brought before him earlier this year. Thank goodness that stopped. I think that Mr. Burke has uh, looked at the district. He's looked at the uh, top administration. He's made some adjustments there that I think long-term will be beneficial to the school district. It's a little early right now. It's an election year. There's a lot of things going on, but uh, I think that once things settle down a little bit that he's, he's on the right track. And I, I just want to throw a statistic out at you. I currently serve on the, uh, at, at a, a gubernatorial appointment on early childhood, which is a, uh, a committee that's uh, in the state that makes recommendations to the uh, child cabinet on things that we can do better, you know, for serving our students here in Lee County on, on pre-K pre programs and child care. One of the things that, that I've tried to stress in my service since 2010 is that we need to spend more time with our English language learners and teaching the English language. And I think that uh, I work with great people on that committee. We meet quite often. And one of the things that came up was the astounding statistics on English language learners here in Lee County. If you look at your FCAT reading and you know what uh, college preparation of the approximate 370 students that are English language learners who took 10th grade uh, reading, only four students are college ready. That versus 20% of all students here in Lee County. So what I suggested in that panel over the past year is that we spend more hours early with those students and can devote more uh, money in the early pre-K to ensure that uh, they get a good start, they understand the English language, and they can compete uh, in the classroom. And I think that's an area that we need to look at, and I know that the new superintendent is also looking at those areas. With uh, If you look at the 6,000 students that we have in Lee County, uh, uh, as far as how many students have passed that test, only 47 have passed that test out of the uh, 379 in 10th grade. We have a lot of work to do. And I think that by focusing on that, it will enhance all student learning here in Lee County and ensuring that they have the right skills, uh, grammar, uh, basic sentence structure, and so forth. So I think he's on the right track. He just needs support from all the school board members and not what he's getting right now. Um, I was going to ask you how you right. felt about the FCAP rating that came out right. on the schools. Yes. What is it, your perception of that? The rating meaning the scores themselves? Yes. Well, again, 
I had said it for the last eight years of my two terms, and you've written a number of editorials about me and some of the comments that I made to your editorial board. I'm not satisfied with the results. If you look at the results, half your students here in Lee County are unable to read a grade level by 10th grade. I look at the 10th grade numbers because that's the end game for us. We're going to lose them in a few more years in, in the form of graduation. Um, if you look at their college readiness, uh, at, the, at, at the local colleges here, 70 percent of them need some form of remediation in math and reading when they come to the college level. So all of those things com combined concern me that we're not focused enough on those basics of reading, math, and science. And you can look at all the scores, and I brought them with me. Mm -hmm. They all say the same thing. We, not, we don't need to lower standards. We need to keep standards high. But we cannot script our teachers, and that's what we're doing right now. They're being scripted to teach to the test. That's what's going on right now, and it's wrong. It has to stop. We're moving towards end-of-course testing with that support, which is necessary. However, we need to give those teachers more latitude in the curriculum to do what they need to do. We have 5,000 teachers out there. They know what to do, and we're not listening to them. And the results are shown on FCAT. They're shown on ACT, SAT scores. They're all below national averages here in Lee County, no matter which measure you look at, and we need to improve that. Do you think it was right for the Florida State uh, Board of Education to lower the uh, passing score rate for Absolutely the writing test? Absolutely not. That was the wrong thing to do. It was the wrong message to send to the public, and it was the wrong message to send to the school. That, that was going to be my follow-up oh, question, follow because up. we uh, right. interviewed the uh, educational right. commissioner here, and he informed us at the time that he was going to lower the, uh, the score, uh, scores uh, right. on testing so it's even all over the state. And I did not know what the propensity of that was because I thought it has another impact on the morale of the school and the teachers and everything else and did not know what the outcome would be. So I was right. concerned in that, that area when he said that. Do you, do you believe the FCAT should be maintained or retained? Or no, the what? FCAT should be, and it is going to be phased out. That's where the plan is right down the street. Here's what I support. End of course testing, which is what we're doing right now. The second thing I support is going to ACT, the American College Testing, is making that the final test that students take to graduate from uh, the school system. And why do I say ACT? ACT tests right now for math, science, and reading. And uh, we also use it in the state as a way for students that don't pass the FCAT test to have, get a, a, a score that they can pass and graduate here in, in the school system. But it teaches or, or it tests the basics. And I think setting a score there and a, a high bar for our students is, is the right way to go. Uh, but FCAT has served its purpose. Our teachers, again, are being scripted and told what to do. And again, we have 5,000 college graduates there that we're not listening to. They're being told what to do from the very top, meaning the Department of Education down. Let them teach, let them work with the students, and let's enhance the programs. And I have some ideas that I'll share with you about how we can fund those programs without increasing taxes. Well, w wouldn't yes. it have to come from the state down if they made any changes? Or the, it, can it be done locally? We can do things locally. Curriculum is set by the Department of Education, but there are things that we can do locally. They do dictate which testing that we do. However, someone was smart enough up there finally to say FCAT had run its course, so we're not going to be using FCAT in the next couple of years. We'll go to end of course testing. But there has to also has to be another step that we need to go to ensure that we hold high standards, and that's why I suggest the American College testing is the final test that students need to prove that they have uh, accomplished what's needed to move on to the next level. That's very important to have some kind of benchmark that they can use. The boards have a lot of flexibility. We're, if you look on the Florida Department of Education website, and that's for the taxpayers and parents out here, because all the data I use comes from that site, it, it gives all of the different curriculums that we're supposed to be using within the courses, uh, course outcomes and strategies that are being used. However, within that, school boards and superintendents do have latitude. And we need to make sure that we're not only following what we can do creatively, but also going to the state and saying to them that we need to have certain things to get the mission accomplished. And one of those areas is technology. And that's how we can 